Hi, my name is Nathan Ronan, and I'm actually the uh, lead instructor for the CFA Level 2 and Level 3 here at NISA. And even though I teach the CFA Level 1 exam for the December exam, uh, what I'd like to do now is I'd like to actually introduce to you uh, your, your instructor for the CFA Level 1 program when you're taking the June 2013 CFA Level 1 exam. Uh, the person I'd like to introduce to you um, is, a very, is a very knowledgeable person. He's got very, very deep roots in the CFA program. Um, he's a charter holder, um, and his name is Carl Kriego. And actually, uh, Carl is not only very knowledgeable, and not only are his roots very deep in the CFA program, he has a very, very strong commitment to education. And in fact, um, he was my own instructor when I was uh, studying for the CFA Level 1 exam back in 1993. And one of the things that I was always very impressed about Carl was that when I had a question, not only was he available for me to meet, he'd actually set up an appointment and say, come on in, bring your questions with you, sit down and we'll go over them. <clears throat> and you know, I had been right out of an MBA program, so I had a very good background in accounting and finance, but there were still questions in the CFA program that I wasn't sure about. And I'd sit down with Carl and he would take out, whether it be 20 minutes, 30 minutes, an hour, he would go over all my questions, he would never lose patience, he would answer every question that I had. And not only that, he also didn't just want to give you the answer. He wouldn't give you like what many, what I think many typical instructors do, just say, well, the answer is the answer. Don't worry about it. Just remember that the answer, that's what it is. So next time you see it, you don't need to understand why, just you want to pass the exam. He never really had that philosophy. He really sat down with me, would explain to me, and even if I wouldn't get it on the first shot, he would explain it in a different way. He'd always find different angles to come at that same problem until I finally understood it. And, and I uh, put a lot of credit to him for that because that's, I think, what got me over the edge there at CFA level one to pass immediately and move on to level two. And I think that, that you will find that same thing in the classroom and outside the classroom when he's your instructor here at NISA for CFA level one. So what I'd like to do now is I'd like to uh, introduce Carl Kriego to you and I'd like to give him the opportunity to tell you about his background, his experience, and some tips for the CFA level one exam. Thank you. My name is Carl Kriego and I'll be teaching some of the CFA level one courses for NISA in uh, the, for the 2013 program. I received my CFA charter in 1988, and in the fall of 1988, I began teaching courses at NISA. Uh, at that time, we were located at uh, 70 Broadway. Uh, in the spring of 1989, I began teaching the CFA Level 1 class, and we keep developing our programs for Level 2 and for Level 3. Uh, during that period, I also wrote the notes that we used for the CFA uh, courses that we taught at NISA. I continued to teach uh, for NISA until 2006. At uh, that time, I decided I was going to retire, take life easy. However, uh, about a year and a half later, I got a call from Hong Kong asking me to come over and teach CFA classes for them. And so for the last three years, I've been in Hong Kong teaching uh, not only CFA level one, two, and three classes, uh, but also classes uh, for licensing for the Hong Kong Stock Exchange. I'm pleased to be back with NISA where I began uh, 24 years ago, and I look forward to teaching uh, for them again. One of the key things and questions I get, especially this time of the year, is should I begin to study now even though the exam will not be until June of 2013? And my answer is yes, you can begin now. And what I'd like to do is to give you a few tips about how to prepare for the level one exam and what you can do to study for that. First off, there is a lot of material that you have to cover for the CFA exam especially level one. We will not be able to cover all of that material in class. We will concentrate on those elements that have the highest probability of being on the exam to make sure that you have a very thorough understanding of them. So while we go through the material, it is important for you to summarize. And so making flashcards is a key thing that you can do. And you can start that now, if you'd like, by going through some of the readings and looking at the learning outcome statements and uh, developing flashcards that address the issues that are brought up in those particular learning outcome statements. Another thing that you can do to prepare for the exam now is to learn how to use one of the two required calculators for the test. Only two calculators can be used on the CFA exams. That's the TI uh, 
BA2 plus or the HP12C. And if you're not using either one of these calculators at work or didn't use one in school, you need to purchase one and begin to learn how to use it. You need to learn how to use the basic math functions, that's add, subtract, multiply, and divide. It would be helpful if you used the, learned how to use the time value of money keys. That would be present value, payment, future value. And also the uh, NPV or net present value and internal rate of return calculations for a series of uneven cash flows. And if you have time also to learn some of the statistics keys such as uh, mean variance calculations and also some of the accounting keys which such as how to calculate uh, depreciation given salvage value, the cost of the asset, useful life, etc. Another thing that you can do is to review the time value money material in volume 5 of the CFA program readings. And this is on pages 243 to 292 of the 2013 candidate readings. I will not be able to cover a lot of that material in class. Uh, most people have had this uh, in a college uh, environment. And so uh, a review for you uh, will be most helpful. We will cover some of the concepts in fixed income and equity and corporate finance. Uh, but if you can get a head up on that, uh, in your study program, it would certainly be very, very useful for you. Another prep advice I have for you is the fact that the CFA Institute assumes that you have had at least one course in basic financial accounting. Many of you in college have probably had this, uh, although it may have been several years ago and you're not as familiar with the accounting concepts as you once were. The problem is the fact that the financial reporting and analysis portion of the exam is 20%. It's the largest section on the CFA Level 1 exam, and so therefore it is absolutely important that you master this material. And to do this, you need to review the composition of the basic financial statements. That's the income statement, the balance sheet, statement of cash flow, uh, basics of debits and credits. We don't do debits and credits in the CFA exam, but knowing about the debiting of expenses or the crediting of revenues is certainly helpful for understanding some of the material that we will be going through. So if you have a chance in volume uh, three of the CFA program curriculum readings, uh, especially those 20 readings number 22, uh, 23, and 24, it's pages five to 136, to look over that material to review the basic financial accounting would also be extremely helpful. If you wish, you could look also at the ethics readings to go through that. It is not necessary to memorize the standards of professional conduct by number, but to just to give it a once over, uh, looking at the conduct that is pro uh, prohibited and the conduct that is acceptable on the standards would be extremely useful. Uh, in our review classes, we go through that. And in preparation for the exam, you'll spend more time concentrating on that so you get much closer to the exam. But some familiarity with that would be extremely helpful. The last tip that I want to give you is one that is very, very important because Nathan talked about uh, answering questions and being available to you. And I think that uh, for the CFA uh, program, especially level one, this is absolutely critical. And I try to make myself as available as possible. Uh, when our classes start, I'll be giving you schedules for office hours, things of that nature, where you can get in touch with me. But that said, there is one thing that we need to talk about here with that. And that is this, that people will go through the curriculum readings. Many, many more people, though, will buy notes provided by outside vendors, review notes, summary notes. And one of the things that you have to do for this is to check for errata in these resources. For example, the CFA Institute has already released its volumes, the five volumes it has for the level one program for um, the uh, 2013 program. And as of 31 July 2012, they have already found uh, 12 errata items in, it's actually six volumes, I said five, but it's actually six volumes. 
And I just checked yesterday, so as of 15 September 2012, the number of errata items has increased to 17. And some of these deal with calculations and numbers. And so therefore, if you looked at the answers in the book uh, and, couldn't, and you did it right but saw that the answer was something different, you would be wasting a lot of time trying to figure out what's the problem when by checking the errata you can do this. Uh, with regard to the CFA Institute, you can go to their website and then go to the candidate programs, then look go to curriculum, and you'll see a, a link there that takes you to the errata for the CFA Level 1 curriculum for uh, 2013. If you're buying vendor notes, you should go to the vendor's website on a monthly basis and check those uh, websites for any errata that they post. Uh, for example, Schweizer does post errata on its website and continues to do it on an ongoing basis. And it will certainly help you and reduce your frustration as you're going through problems and looking at the answers uh, to make sure that they are the correct ones. And the only way you can do that is to check the errata. One problem that has happened uh, many times is the fact that students believe that if they register for uh, a NISA course, they've registered for the CFA exam. Uh, this is not true. You have to register with the CFA Institute separately from registering uh, for a NISA course. So please uh, be careful about this. Uh, check with the CFA Institute. They have early registration periods where you get a reduction in fee. And uh, make sure that you have registered for the exam uh, with the CFA Institute. So, there is things that you can do now. It's not too early to start. And I wish you the very best of luck with your level one study and with your participation in the CFA program. Thank you.